some in here that treat TMD, and with reference to the concept of building these referral networks and whatnot, the, the same concepts apply here when we talk about TMD and sleep. Uh, the big thing with TMD is that it's really about headaches. Um, it's not about the jaw joint. We call it TMJ. The physicians think of it as TMJ. But the physicians and the chiropractors, they don't deal with occlusion. They deal with pain. They don't know anything about teeth and joints and stuff. They just know the patient is hurting. So if we're going to work with physicians, we need to learn about headaches, posture, and the trigeminal nerve. And then we can go back to them. And when I use the word physicians, it could be chiropractors or physical therapists or whoever, and educate them about, about the role of the mandible and cervical posture and how it plays in neck, head and neck pain. Real briefly, there's two models here. The old model has been that headaches were a vascular problem. I'm speaking of migraines particularly. Uh, the local event in the tissue muscle from, tissue, or from muscle contraction and tension and lactic acid. Yeah, that's a muscle tension headache. I'm speaking about the migraine-ish kind that most physicians deal mostly with. The old one model was kind of a vascular model. The new one is a neurovascular model. And it's about the dilation of blood vessels. It's about trigeminal activation. Um, it's about central sensitization. Okay? That's, that's really, those are the words you need to get familiar with. Uh, when we talk about neurovascular inflammation or neurogenic inflammation, we're talking about CGRP or calcitonin gene-related peptide. Um, activation or activity on the trigeminal nerve um, upregulates the DNA to manufacture the protein calcitonin gene-related peptide, which then, <clears throat> then migrates out both peripherally and centrally from the trigeminal ganglion along the, uh, the axon of the nerve, um, and it has effects peripherally where it is dumped into uh, the cerebral vascular tissues causing vasodilation and centrally into the brain stem through the trigeminal uh, nucleus uh, where it, it, resets, it resets the, neuro, the neurogenic uh, pathways there in terms of their pain sensitization. Um, CGRP activated uh, sensory neurons in the trigeminal ganglion, release it, they go peripheral as well as central, which is what that slide is saying. This is what it looks like uh, peripherally. We have the, the uh, and it's like the, menin the middle meningeal branch of the maxillary nerve, of the trigeminal nerve, has an afferent fiber that goes up into the dura. So the trigeminal branch, which we've been thinking is what? You know, it's ophthalmic, uh, maxillary, mandibular, has a branch off the maxillary nerve that goes up and feeds all the blood vessels in the dura. Did you know that? How many knew that? Okay. That's an important thing to understand because if I have trigeminal activation and the production of CGRP in the trigeminal nerve, it's going to go out to the end of that nerve and it's going to release it into the, into the tissues around that blood vessel and cause vasodilation. It also goes, while that's going peripherally, it's also going centrally and it hits the trigeminal tract and into the, um, uh, the trigeminal uh, caudus. Uh, uh, caudalis in the trigeminal tract and it has an effect centrally to dismodulate or to reset the pain receptor thresholds in the brain stem. So what might be a, a little bit of a pain uh, or a noxious stimulus for before now becomes ex exaggerated and I get this central sensitization. The neurologists think this is all coming, or at least uh, historically they've all thought it was coming from the peripheral areas, the aura, the D, the the uh, cortical spreading depression, you know, that goes across, and that's what stimulates that afferent branch, and that's what then causes, they're, they're thinking it comes that way. They're now starting to switch that the trigeminal activation is going centrally, and that it's not so much peripheral as it is the central dismodulation in the brain stem that's resetting all this. In, in, so it really is a biochemical event. A headache is a biochemical event. CGRP, uh, when it's upregulated and manufactured, is a feedback loop where it feeds itself. So if I get CGRP going, I can get a feedback loop, and that migraine can go for 72 hours. I mean, it just goes on and on and on and on until something stops it. But it also has an effect on mast cells, which are my host cells, to upregulate them to create uh, TNF, interleukin-1, bradykinin, histamine release. So you can see that there is now, a, a, there, you, know, you can now do the research and, and just Google it and just say uh, migraines and systemic inflammation or, you know, and you can start to see the connections here because these are biochemicals that are also working together. So you'll, you'll run across reports that link cardiovascular disease with migraines. 
It's like, well, what's the underlying, what's the common thread there? Why does a migrainer have an increased chance for a heart disease? Is the migraine causing the heart disease? Well, no, but it's got these, these uh, feedback loops and this biochemistry going on in the body. So this is what it looks like schematically. You have your three branches. It doesn't really show the dural branch, but coming in here, you have all of this afferent activity coming in through the branches into the trigeminal ganglion. All, uh, most all of this traffic comes in and descends in the brainstem in the trigeminal nucleus, where it synapses to the second order neuron, and then it ascends to the thalamus, where it uh, uh, synapses again, and then goes up to the cortex for interpretation. What's going on in the brainstem is when all this biochemistry is going on, and I have all this upstream traffic and downstream traffic, which is muscle clenching, grinding. I mean, that's all traffic. Those are cars on the freeway at rush hour. It's very busy. That produces CGRP through upregulation. Now, what's interesting is when you look at these diagrams in a neurology textbook or a neurology piece, you'll see the three branches of the trigeminal nerve illustrated but they truncate or cut off two of them. They're just thinking about the one that goes up to the dural vessels. And I'm looking at this thinking, well, wait a minute, if this is a principle, if CGRP is in the, in the ganglion, there's two other branches involved here, aren't there? And so that what they're not getting, in my opinion, is that all oh, this activity from grinding and all the pain and the muscle tension and the lactic acid and the unbalance and the whatever, the co-activated muscles with my cervical muscles to brace head posture and keep my airway open. All that activity is generating electrical activity or putting cars on the freeway, producing this going on. And furthermore, if I had a CGRP polymorphism that made me more susceptible to this chemical desensitization or dysmodulation in the brainstem, then I could have an exaggerated response. And, I, and therefore, I'm going to say, you know what, migraines are just all in my family. Okay, because it's not the odor, it's not the hormone, it's not the chemical, it's not the flashing strobe lights that cause migraines. Those are triggers, but they're playing on a sensitized brain that set the stage for something to happen. I can walk in the same room with a migraine, or they get a migraine, I don't. What gives? I don't have a sensitized brain. Maybe they have CGRP polymorphism, maybe they have a bad bite, or maybe they're off in their upper cervical complex or something. We dentists need to remember and teach the PTs and the chiros and so forth that the mandible is not a hinge. It's hanging in a sling. It's hanging in a sling and therefore it has six degrees of freedom, up, down, forward, backward, left, right, as well as pitch, yaw, and roll around those same axes. Therefore, it's just hanging in a sling, okay? And so if I'm off, then I'm gonna be recruiting muscle fibers somewhere and putting cars on the freeway to get bracing to occur because I have to brace with my cervical group in order to maintain and help body posture and head posture. And we're even now starting to think that airway is a part of this. So we have what the traditional stomachomagnetic triad has been about, you know, muscles, teeth, and uh, TMJ. Uh, we now think of it more as the obligate occlusal complex, um, which uh, Norman Thomas has taught us, that involves other issues because we're, we really are, uh, headaches and TMD really is a neurological disorder but we're all connected. 